Oscar with PS Arts, and today we'll be doing a project inspired by an artist named Jean Michel Basquiat. So, the piece that's inspiring our project today is um, found in the book Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Uh, if you've never read the book, the book combines the poetry of artist Maya Angelou and the artwork of Jean Michel Basquiat. Uh, PS Arts has a reading of the book um, by Lisa Kudrow if you're interested. Um, so check our website um, or the link in our bio and our YouTube video and you can find a reading to the book if you don't have a physical copy. But today we'll be working uh, with, uh, it's actually on the very first page of the book. Um, so take a look at the image here um, and let me know what you see uh, or share with somebody that you're watching uh, what you see in the image. For today's project, you will need a paper or a surface, watercolors, a pencil, and crayons. So we're going to be working from this image, uh, but if you see another image in the book that you're interested in, I would encourage you to try to recreate it. Or if you have an image of your own that you would like to create from, I would encourage that as well. But for this piece, um, we'll be trying to recreate the image that you see on the very first page of Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to start off with a shape that looks like a letter U. Now, I'm using a black crayon um, so it can show better on video. But if you're working with a pencil, then that's fine too. If you do have crayons, I would suggest crayons as a better option um, between the two. So what you want to do is you want to start off with a shape that looks like this. It's kind of like a letter U or like an incomplete rectangle. You're missing the, the top portion here. So go ahead and draw that for your first step. If you don't have a piece of paper that you can work on, you can use uh, some cardboard. If you have some old boxes laying around or like an old cereal box, you can use the inside part. So check with an adult and see if um, they have any uh, old papers laying around. Sometimes you get junk mail and uh, the mail on the on the other side is blank. Like this is a notice that I got from the mailman that I didn't get my package. The other side is blank. So uh, you can use the, the, the back side to draw on. So John Michelle, when he was a kid, he didn't always have paper. Um, and so uh, what his mom used to do is she used to get his dad's old work papers and he would draw on the back of his dad's work papers. But Always check with an adult before you use uh, something that you find around your house. So if you look on that very first page, Maya Angelou's poem says, Shadows on the wall, noises down the hall, life doesn't frighten me at all. So I really like that first sentence of shadows on the wall, and I like it compared to this image because if you're scared and you see some shadows on the wall, sometimes the shadows might transform uh, into something that's not really there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform this shape into something that wasn't originally there. Um, so I'm gonna be drawing a face on this shape, uh, kind of like Jean Michel Basquiat did. You don't have to copy the same uh, shapes that I'm drawing. If you are inspired by different shapes, then you can add those too. But I'm going to start off by adding some eyes, and I'm gonna do that by drawing some circles. Now, when Jean Michel Basquiat drew, he wasn't con he didn't care about making perfect shapes um he, he was all about expression so he would often go over his shapes many times so that he would get um, a lot of different interesting lines there so you see it's not a perfect circle uh you see some some shapes coming out on this side but um they are interesting and so what i'm gonna do with the other eye is i'm gonna make it a little smaller just to give my, my face a little character. So like I said before, John michel uh, didn't really care about making perfect drawings. His drawing style was abstract, it wasn't realistic. Um, but if you're really feeling like you don't want to go straight with a crayon because you can't erase a crayon, then you can start off with a pencil and then trace over it with a crayon. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. It's not really a mistake. It'll just make your, your artwork a little more interesting. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, add a nose to our character and we're gonna do it the same way that John Michel 
did in his piece it's kind of the same shape that we have here it's like an it's like a letter u um but a little skinnier a little narrower so we're gonna add it just like that so now we've got two eyes and a nose and now i'd want to add a mouth uh to my character and the way I'm gonna add a mouth is I'm gonna draw another circle. Just like that. But I also wanna add some teeth. So I'm gonna draw a line straight through and then some straight lines going up. So you see, it's not perfect. The line is going straight through the mouth um, this circle is not a perfect circle. It's touching the nose a little bit. I'm not going for realism. Um, I'm just trying to be as expressive as I can. And if you would like to, you can even go over it a few times once you draw it, just like that. Give it some more interesting lines. There you have something like that. Now I wanna give this face a little friend here on the side. Uh, now, if you look at John Michel's, it has a little square next to him, but I want to make my shape a circle. So I'm going to make it a circle just like that. So I have my circle, and now I'm going to add a face to it the same way I did with this one. I'm going to add some eyes, a nose, and a mouth. So there you have it. My face has another little friend here with eyes. I changed the nose a little bit. I made it a, a triangle shape, um, but the mouth, I kept it the same. I just uh, moved it off to the side a little bit. So one of the things that John Michel was also famous for was that when he would paint, um, he would also have books around him or he would listen to music. And if he heard certain words or sentences in the music or certain words and sentences in his books, he that he really liked he would add those into his artwork so my suggestion would be um, and if you find a word from Maya Angelou's poem that you really enjoy maybe something like life doesn't frighten me or uh, shadows on the wall or another phrase or sentence that you really like add it to your to your um, paper or maybe you have your own sentence that you heard on TV today or a word that you heard from somebody that you really like or that really stuck in your mind and you wanna add it to your piece. Sometimes um, the words might not make sense with your drawing right away, but once you finish the whole thing, you can take a look at your image and see if the word and your drawing have a connection or maybe they're in two separate worlds but part of the same artwork. But when I heard this poem for the first time, the sentence that first stuck in my mind was Panthers in the Park. And I really liked it because I also liked the painting that John Michel made of the panther. And panthers are also some of my favorite animals. It's also kind of scary, right? You don't, you wouldn't want to run into a hungry panther in the park. So I'm going to write it here with my crayon. Now you can write it big or you can write it small. Um, you don't have to write it up here where I'm writing it. You can write it off to the side. It's wherever you want. Um, he would draw all over it. And you also can pick uh, more than one if you would like to. If you want to pick one phrase here and maybe you want to write one phrase down here, that's totally okay. And again, you don't need to worry about writing neatly. So now we have something like this. We have Panthers in the Park up here and also my drawings here so for our final steps uh, some of the things that you can do are you can make extra little drawings here sometimes when John Michel thought that one piece of his uh, work was really important sometimes he would cross it out and then the person who was looking at the artwork 
would look at the image and wonder why he crossed out the word park. Um, so by, by almost erasing it, he was bringing more attention to it. Or you can circle it, right? Or maybe draw a little line to it. If you uh, only have a pencil available, you can do something like what I did here. It's the same drawing of the face um, and his buddy down here and a phrase from the, from the poem. I chose life doesn't frighten me for this one. Um, and then I wrote at all at the bottom. I circled it to emphasize it just like Basquiat used to do. And I drew some arrows here to emphasize the word doesn't. Um, so that brings your attention to that word. Um, so you can use a pencil as well. Um, and if you wanna get expressive with your pencil, um, you can do that also. Um, I use some cross hatching here. So you draw some lines going one way and then you draw lines going the other way um, so that they cross together. And that's called cross hatching. And you can do that across different areas. Um, I did some squiggles up here with my pencil, drew, drew some diagonal line going this way on the nose. Um, I did some, some dots here um, to add some texture to my face. And then another thing that you can do is you can shade with your pencil. So you can uh, sort of lightly draw and you can slowly go layer by layer, adding a little bit more shade. Or uh, you can draw some lines and then smudge it with your finger or using a napkin um, and you'll get some cool shading like that. If you are going to use watercolor, one of the cool things that you can do is you can use a white crayon. Um, to draw certain things. So I'm going to draw a crown. Crowns were very famous symbols that uh, John michel used to use. So if you wanna draw a crown. You can draw a crown on your figure. And now you use the white crayon. If you use a white crayon on a white surface, you're not gonna be able to see it that much. But the cool thing about using watercolors is that once you paint over it, it'll start to come out kind of like a hidden message. So you can leave a few of those around your paper with a white crayon, or you can use whatever color you have available. So I'm just gonna make some marks here, just some scribbles with my white crayon. And then I'm gonna switch over to a different color. So I'm switching over to some different colors. I've got a green here, a pink, and an orange light color. Um, and I'm just gonna add uh, some scribbles to my to my painting. Um, switching over to the red, and you can add these wherever you feel they would look good. sort of uh, spacing them out in between. Um, it's really up to you where you want to put them. So once you are happy with um, the different colors that you've added to your painting or your drawing, uh, you're ready to get painting if you have some watercolors. Now, if you have some watercolors, you're gonna need some water. If you don't have watercolors, but you still want to paint, you can ask an adult to make you some coffee uh, wait, wait for it to get cold and then you can use some of that um, coffee to stain your, your, your paper and you're gonna get some cool brown tones with the coffee or if you've got some coca-cola you can use that as well as always ask an adult to see what you could use um, if you have some food coloring you could mix that in with some water um, and make some paint so I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm going to choose a color I'm going to start off with an orange color. So I'm gonna choose some orange. Now the cool thing about watercolors is that it won't mix with the crayons. So once you paint, you can paint right over the crayon and you don't have to worry about mixing with it. They're going to resist each other. So again, John michel was all about energy when he was painting. You can see a lot of his movement in the painting. So uh, try to do the same. You don't need to paint uh, carefully if you don't want to. You can um, show all of that expression in your painting. 
So again, the cool thing about watercolors, if you use the white crayon, uh, when you use a white crayon and you paint over it, you start to see your drawing reveal itself. So I drew a crown on my character with a white crayon. And when I use the black or any other color, it starts to reveal itself. So now you can see the crown here. I also did uh, some drawings here. I did some scribbles with, with uh, a white crayon. So I'm gonna paint over it with some black. And they start to show up. So now that I painted over it, you can see those scribbles that I did with the white. Once you finish your work you might get something like what you see here uh, there's really no rules to this kind of painting and this kind of drawing other than um, just have as much fun as possible while you do it um, try to put as much energy into your drawings into your painting as you can um, you can use as much or as little color as you want uh, but that is the final step that is once you finish uh, painting so that was our project based on John Michel Basquiat um, thank you for coming into my studio and thank you for inviting me into yours. Um, until next time, always remember that as an artist, you have the freedom to imagine and the power to create. And if you would like to share your work with us, um, you can share your work on Facebook, Twitter, um, and Instagram using the hashtag PSArtsToGo. Um, just remember to ask an adult before you